Welcome to the Royals Rundown Podcast, a Kansas City Royals podcast presented by Royals Review. He is Jeremy Greco. I am Jacob Milham. And in the spirit of Jake Eisenberg with a baseball helmet full of ice cream, let's crush it. All right. All right, Jeremy. I know that was no, that was a little took a little journey there on that one. But we're we're all a little slow right now, Jeremy, because I don't know about you, but daylight saving time is just throwing me off so much right now on Sunday. It it snuck up on me this year. I I normally like you know I see all the alerts all over social media. Don't forget to spring forward, yeah. and nobody said anything to me. <laughs> no one said a word. And then I I was having trouble sleeping last night, and I got up and I was like, oh no, it's already three a.m. <laughs> and then I'm and then I saw a different clock. So that was looking at my phone. And I saw a different clock that uh, on my stove that was, said it was two. And I'm like, I. Am I dreaming? What is happening here? So, um, we, yeah, we I I really wish that I had been able to sleep when I wanted to, because if I had just never known that it was daylight savings time, would I be tired right now? That's true. Is if all, I had it all in your head, if I had gotten a good night's sleep, regardless of daylight savings time, would I be tired right now? <laughs> well, it's it's OK. You can just tell your friends you were up late celebrating the Chris Jones contract. Oh, speaking of which, way to upstage us in the middle of spring training, guys. God. Um, I saw that about midnight, yeah. and I absolutely called my dad knowing he would be asleep and <laughs> woke him up so I could tell him about that. That was very exciting news. Chris Jones is probably my favorite player, um, and I know that my dad really likes him, too. Um, so very excited to keep him in Kansas City. Probably, I would assume, for his career at this point. I know yeah, that it's not really know. a five-year deal, blah, 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 but if he got paid when he when he was going to get paid, he's not going to get paid like that again. Mm-hmm. Stay, And he's always wanted to stay in Kansas City, so just stay in Kansas City now. Might as well. Might as well. But, hey, if you want more on that, you can go check out Arrowhead Pride and their podcast network because, you know, Royals Review <laughs> makes us happen, but they have a whole – cast of characters oh over there on Herod pride you know We're, that but that's because you and i are good enough we don't there we don't yeah. need any more podcasts just the two of us yep just two of us and we'll keep it rocking and just rolling. the two of us do, 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 do. well while you're uh scatting and uh singing karaoke and want to keep updated on the kansas city royals you got to go visit www.royalsreview.com you can also find them on facebook and x at Royals Review. You can support the podcast further by following us on X and TikTok at Royal Rundown Pod because we definitely have both those things and they are definitely active and they definitely have the best Royals content out there on the respective platforms. Ah, We love it. But if you want to engage with us further, you got to check out our polls and Q&As on Spotify. Every week we give you a chance to answer a question and we read your responses on the following episode. We did that this week, Jeremy, and we got nine responses to the Q&A. Ooh, the, people, know, right? the people have things to say, Jacob. They do. They have opinions, and they have to let it know. We have all we have all the cast and crew. Preston Farr is in there. Royal Rupert's in there. Fistifer's in there. It'll, oh, it'll yeah. be a good rundown. Oh, yeah. We love it. But first, we got to run down some Royals news that happened since the last episode including some camp bodies fitting. The MLB camp is getting smaller and smaller every day, it seems. Plus, we each pick our most surprising spring training performances so far. So, Jeremy, let's go ahead and run into some of this news, starting off with Royals broadcaster Jake Eisenberg. He's turning 29 today. Woo, so happy, happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday, Jake. Um, we've had him a couple of times on the show before. So if you search in your podcast feed for Royals Rundown Eisenberg, you should find that episode really easy. Oh, I appreciate just a support. couple of weeks ago. You should only have to scroll down a little bit or something. Oh, that's, you know what? I don't, I, scroll I, up. I don't know what that. direction we scroll. We, we don't assume scrolling directions around here. Okay? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. That's why, because search. If you scroll left, that's control. fine. Yeah. I, I, I just don't swipe left. <laughs> I don't know what happens if you swipe left in Spotify. I'm a little, I'm a little concerned by that. <laughs> the whole podcast gets deleted. But I, all, I also forgot that Jake is a twin. I had, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, he has a, he shared, he 
him. He has a fraternal fraternal twin. His sister Taylor um, was also turning 29 today, which it would be a little He's... weird if they were twins and they had like different birthdays and ages. I would have some questions about how that worked. But, She's uh, uh, it's not Taylor Swift, right? It's a different. I, I don't know. I just know her first name. So mm-hmm. maybe is Swift a, a, a performance name? Maybe is it a stage name? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But happy birthday, Jake. Listen, it's been it's been great hearing them back in the broadcast booth to start off this spring. And I know that he got his big old ice cream helmet of uh, or ice cream helmet in Arizona. He posted about it on his ex. So ice cream helmet of ice cream. Yes, it is. I I swapped the words and did the did the things with the words. It it just wasn't very good. I I would like to eat ice cream out of a helmet made of ice cream. I think that is that would be the way to upgrade hel- ice cream in a helmet. I think if if they made if you could figure out a waffle cone mold, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that would be the ice cream helmet. I think I could get down with that. Because just holding, holding we gotta pass a, this, Jacob. Quick, <laughs> turn off the podcast. We can't let anyone hear this. No, stop recording immediately. We'd be doing some people a favor, but for most of you, <laughs> you'd be you'd be a little sad. I would I would hope at least nine people at least would be sad, Jacob. I, I know that's insane. But continuing with the Royals news, um, MLB revealed on Thursday. The projected rosters for the first ever spring breakout prospect games. Um, Kansas City's spring breakout game will be part of a doubleheader with the Milwaukee Brewers next Sunday, March 17th. So the prospect game will go first. That will be played at 3.05 Central Standard Time. And then the big league game will start immediately afterwards, three hours later. So kind of a kind of a cool way to get more more eyes on the prospects and stuff like that do you think you'll be tuning into that jeremy i'm gonna try you said it was at three o'clock yeah so i'm still at work um oh yeah but i on a sunday oh on a sunday i thought you said thursday what the heck is wrong with me no (laughs) um again i'll try it i do i have plans most sundays uh, but I'll I'll give it my best. I I'm go. very curious. I you know just to see like who do the Royals choose? Did the Royals choose? Did MLB choose? I'm not sure. But was, who, who's who's there and how do they do? <laughs> it was a little bit of a of a blending. Some of the some of the big names that are going to be in there: catcher Blake Mitchell, who is currently the system's top prospect according to MLB Pipeline. Plus pitchers Ben Kuderna and Frank Mazzucato are going to be in that game. So three of the of the top five prospects in the system, not too shabby, if you ask me. And plus, that is a it's a much more well rounded prospect roster. I, I will say that, but I think it's a great way to try and get more eyes on the on the stars of tomorrow. You know, absolutely. I'm. It's a great idea whether I get to participate or not, and I hope they keep doing it because it's just like. Hey, one of the great things about spring training is kind of getting a sneak peek into the future of your team. Mm-hmm. Um, and so really leaning into that aspect of it for a couple of days, because um, it's all the teams over the yep. o- over the whole weekend, I believe. Yes. Um, so that's that's just cool. Yeah, that it is. That it is. So we'll be looking forward to that next weekend. But let's get to the to the big league club real quick, because they are just past the halfway mark in spring training we are on the downhill side absolutely loving that currently while we are recording the royals are playing the athletics so all of this all these numbers all these stats the record stuff like that is not reflecting of the athletics game right now the royals are 11 and 4 which hey not too shabby uh, 73 win percentage through 15 games, and they only trailed the Dodgers um, by a half game for the lead in the Cactus League. Um, it's it, it was a little wonky because I think it was the Rockies game that got rained out. It was either mm-hmm. on Thursday or Friday. They there was a rain out. 
um, hasn't been rescheduled. MLB.com just says it's canceled. I doubt they yeah. reschedule a spring There's training. No reason to, you're not going to like, oh, now we got to do a day night double header to make sure. No, it's spring training. It's exhibition. It doesn't. Everybody pitched in the bullpen. They hit in the cages. Move on. Yep, exactly. But we are it's what we're just marching towards opening day. There are two other exhibition games that don't count towards spring training. I will say that first one, the spring breakout game that we talked about will not count towards the league standings and and all that jazz. But then also, folks, uh, folks forget on March 25th, the Royals are going down to Springdale, Arkansas to face off against the Northwest Naturals. I think that'll uh, that'll be pretty fun if you're if you're down there. It's not every day you get to see uh, get to see a major league ball club in your in your home stadium. And the, you said, OK, so the major league team is playing the double A team. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. and who are we rooting for here? <laughs> are we rooting for the bullies? <laughs> Because if, if the Royals <laughs> lose, that's not good. No, it's not. <laughs> but if the Royals go down to Arkansas and just absolutely They're just like, yeah, the let's beat up our own prospects. 22 <laughs> to 2. And this fire the guy who gave up the runs. What the heck, man? <laughs> this is a lose-lose. And Cole a win-win Reagan, at the same time. He, he walked two guys and they both scored. He's gone. <laughs> Listen, I I just think it's cool because there's a lot of players who could be making the jump from the low A and high A teams to double A that we can that we can see in that game. So it might be a little bit reminiscent of the spring breakout game in that it doesn't really matter and you see a lot of big name prospects there. That's what I that's what I think at least. Um, so we are at the halfway mark. Let's see here. So as of today on Sunday, 18 days till opening day really uh, so many days i know and it is it is a lot of days but it is less than three weeks at least i i mean it's uh and at least the royals are opening i know neither one of us are able to go to a game in in kaufman stadium because of our location but i i still think it's cool that the royals have been able to open the season so consistently at home as of late that's kind of a, a luxury if if you ask me um let's see here so we don't want to talk about the game yet we want to see what happens we could talk about that nick prado home run yes yes we we will later on but i was i was trying to figure out what i was missing for the for the other transactions Uh, uh, some guys got demoted to the minor league camp i know will klein was probably the biggest name out of that group yeah Um, um so let's go ahead i want to go ahead and run that down real quick so um, the last, the last emo- set of demotions that happened on Sunday morning, the Royals announced that pitcher Beckway and outfielder Diego Hernandez were both assigned to minor league camp. Neither and that one took surprises. The, no, that not really a, a surprise at all. Um, the Royals now sit at fifty six players in spring training camp, so that is Which very is interesting. Thirty too many. Yeah. Yeah, they have a lot of whittling down to do. But Evan Sisk and Jonah Poto, two guys that um, I feel like have cult followings on social media amongst Royals players. Like I'll I'll go post something for uh, for Kings of Kaufman, and I'll have two or three folks asking where the he- where's Jonah Poto, and I'm like, look, I, I I look at the numbers, and this isn't a guy. This is <laughs> this isn't a dude. He's, he's related to the, the Mariners GM, right? He's his yeah, son. Jerry Depoto. Let's see here. So how does that 56 players break down? So it's the Royals now have 56 players in Major League camp, including 37 on the Major League Reserves list, 17 non-roster invites, and two players on the 60-day IL. And they're split evenly, like perfectly. The 54 active players, 27 of them are pitchers, 27 of them are are position wow. players. Which is I I don't know I always just thought there'd be more pitchers you, you know what I mean I think there time. probably was earlier on except that for every pitcher you got to have a catcher that's fair that's fair well not so, every right. you, you get you know what I mean yeah Somet- no, sometimes I, the pitchers aren't pitching <laughs> and the catcher can catch a different pitcher yes very true so okay let's go ahead let's go ahead and run run this through Jeremy so. We were we were sitting down trying to figure out what to talk about today, and you you brought up a good point. We're 
we're at the halfway point of spring training and we can start kind of making some determinations on like, well, this isn't just a one or two game hot streak. Like this is. Yeah. Now it's a four or five game hot yeah. streak. Woo. Oh man. <laughs> Listen, it's the, it's the little things. It's the little things, Jeremy. Yes. So there are, I put up a, I put up a piece, I think it's going tomorrow for Kings of Kaufman about the most surprising spring training performances so far. Um, and it's a lot of guys who weren't factoring into the 26 man roster battle. So that makes things a little bit more interesting. So Jeremy, do you mind starting us off? Who is your surprising standout so far this spring? So my guy is actually someone I've been high on okay. um, and that we talked about Wednesday, but uh, um, it's Alec Marsh. Okay. So okay. Uh, he's I like I said, I've been high on him. But he's been like, I've, it's been more of a like, I think that he can figure this out eventually. But right now, he kind of looks like he's figured it out. Um, he's pitched in three games, seven innings. Um, he has, let me see if I can find his K over BB here. It's It's been pretty good. It's out. He's got five strikeouts for every walk so far this uh, this spring training. A 1.29 ERA. Um his home run rate is lower in Arizona spring training than it was during the regular season last year. Dang. Um, just, and, and uh, I wrote about this, I think back in 2017, uh, my first spring training with Royals review uh, mm -hmm. ESPN came out with an article that kind of talked about which stats uh, really kind of stick normalize early um, okay. strikeout rate and walk rate are the two big ones for both sides um and really? his strikeout rate his walk rate are both very good now will they stay that high mm -hmm. or will this, the strikeout stay that high almost 13 per nine and the walk stay that low two and a half per nine probably not yeah. but you could imagine a world where the strikeouts slide back down to 11 11 and a half and the walks only go back up to like three and a half three three and a half and i at that point you're talking about a guy who still strikes out at a three to one ratio Okay. Uh, which I think plays. And I think yeah. he's making himself a dark horse candidate for the rotation. I don't think anyone really gave him a shot at the rotation. Everyone kind of assumed, I think, I know I did, that it was Jordan Lyles or da Daniel Lynch. Um, I, I now begin to wonder, could Alec Marsh factor into that? It's, yeah, he might. Uh, he's pitched well enough. Uh, Daniel Lynch has not separated himself from the pack. And the big question I think is going to be, is Jordan Lyles healthy? If Jordan Lyles is healthy, it's going to be really hard for Alec Marsh, who has options to mm -hmm. and, and doesn't have necessarily a prospect pedigree to knock him off, especially because the bullpen is so fortified that yeah. it's like, well, do I really want to just dump Jordan Lyles into the bullpen? And, and then actually, in that case, it comes down to is Matt Sauer on the team? Um, because True. if Matt Sauer's not on the team, then you're just like, well, we needed a long reliever. Fine, Jordan Lyles, you're the long reliever. Uh, but if if Sauer is going to make the team, there's not a spot for Lyles in the bullpen, and I don't think they want to just cut him. So it, uh, there's some some give and take here, but Alec Marsh is is going to pitch in the big leagues this season. Maybe yeah. not on the opening day roster, is going to. So seeing these improved numbers in spring training uh, is very exciting. I, I'm looking forward to seeing if he can continue it. I I definitely agree with you, and we were yeah we were talking last time. No MLB team is going to go through an entire season with just five starting pitchers. You got to mm -hmm. be like eight or nine deep in your system with guys that you feel comfortable taking up a good amount of a start. And Alec Marsh is is definitely setting himself apart um, from the other depth options in the system. I I will say that Alec Marsh it was such a surprise. Last year, in a sense, um, that I just kind of threw it off as a as an outlier, I guess. Like I was going into last season, I was not expecting Alec Marsh to go to the big leagues. I was not expecting him to make it to that level. Needed more seasoning in AAA, however you want to look at it. But injuries forced the Royals' hand in bringing him and other starting pitchers up. Now, was he perfect in 2023? No, he still has, still had a lot of work to do, and he learned some things trial by fire at the at the big league level. That's He took his lumps. Hopefully, 
he is examining what happened in um in the 2023 season and attacking that in the in the 2024 season at least that's what i'm thinking annie rogers actually talked about him in her uh newsletter today oh okay and mentioned that that's exactly what he's doing oh (laughs) he was he was aiming at spots he was pitching to spots and he kind of learned that his stuff will play so he's trying to to just get ahead in the count and just unleash on guys uh, mm-hmm. And it's working so far in spring training. Also, according to Annie Rogers, um, his name is on the lips of a lot of decision makers yeah. in Kansas City right now. So um, just one more reason to really keep a keep a close eye on him and see what happens. Exactly. Because if if that velo can stay up and he can maintain that velocity. Uh, yeah, I forgot. Charge. I forgot to mention that part. Yeah, that that upper 90s velocity from the mid 90s. Yeah, it, exactly. And I I think we I think we touched on that after his last outing. We did. We, uh, so like that's it's it's not saying like that's nothing new, mm-hmm. but that is something that people are noticing is the velocity is is there. It's jumping um, whether that stays in a bullpen roll or the best case scenario is that he can keep that velocity deep into starts and really emerges as a bottom of the half rotation option for the 2024 Royals and even the 2025 Royals because he is uh he he's not he's not too old he's still got plenty of time to make an impact oh, yeah I mean he's he's 26 this year yeah uh, that's still prospect age really yeah it's it is um it's gonna be interesting to see when he does make his return to the show uh, my pick is definitely a guy I have I have ragged on a lot through the off season and didn't really give a chance at all in spring training. But if a guy can force themselves onto the roster, uh, Nick Prado is doing a pretty damn good job of it. Yeah. If, you, if you ask me, as we are recording this, Nick already has a multi hit game against the athletics. He has a single and then an opposite field three run Homer in the second inning. That puts him up to two home runs in the spring with eight RBIs, only three strikeouts to no walks. Yeah, um, which the that ratio isn't great, but we all know how bad the strikeouts were last year. Yeah, um, and he's he's just he's not striking out a lot. I think it's sitting at like fifteen or fourteen percent if I'm doing my math right, compared to like yeah, 40. 15. 15? Okay, compared to the forty at the at the major league level now. You take any of this stuff with a grain of salt, of course. It it is spring training, but Prado's not facing less quality opponents so much so that it's a problem, if if that makes sense. There's there are some margins. Um, I want to say that he is hovering above the the double A level, which is kind of where a lot of spring training opponent quality is right now. Yeah, um, Jeremy, I, I I see you typing furiously. What's he What's he sitting at right now? His op qual is seven point two, so 7. just a 2. little bit above double A, like you said. Yeah, and it's you don't you don't even see comp op qual above eight very often. Usually, nope. it's like in that not this early in spring training. Yeah, so I don't know. I really I'm hopeful that this that this sticks. Because he does, uh, he does have a good pedigree for for the bench. Um, he can play first base, a a spot that like I really don't trust Frazier or Hampson covering down on if they're the utility options. Plus, he was in the outfield a little bit. He could probably hold down left field or right field in the in a pinch if he needed to. I actually believe that Annie talked. Yeah, Annie did talk about Nick. Um, today in her in her newsletter as well <laughs> and she highlighted that it, he is finally healthy after two years of fighting through hip and groin injuries saying that Prado feels like himself again and yeah. y- you know what it's we, it just we brings can... me back to my concerns with the Royals and injuries that I've had for the past few years yeah yeah and I, I remember, do you remember the whole Hunter Dozier thumb injury yeah. thing? It's It seems like a small injury, and it seems like something that you can just fight through. But, I mean, hip and groins, you have to use those in every facet of baseball, whether it's batting, fielding, running, throwing. They, oh, yeah, you, you're not swinging a bat without your hips. No. Not effectively, so, anyway. 
if 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 he's gotten if he's gotten the uh the issues resolved and he's actually healthy again then maybe this uh maybe this spring training showing is kind of legit maybe we should start paying attention what do you think jeremy my only thing is that a lot of the spring training about uh, Nick Prado is power and power yeah. in Arizona doesn't mean anything. <laughs> I'm a little true. concerned he hasn't walked yet, mm-hmm. but like you said, that strikeout rate is impressive. Um, even facing double A pitching, double A quality pitching to keep the strikeout rate that low. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to believe uh, he's, he's certainly you'd rather he's better than, be- than, than not. Um, yeah. and Nelson Velasquez has struggled. Uh, it's also worth noting that Nelson Velasquez does have an option. So if Prado keeps hitting and Nelson doesn't, it, the Royals don't lose anything by keeping Nick up and demoting Velasquez. Yeah. And then, and then, you know, if it doesn't work out, you can swap them and no harm, no foul. Exactly. Uh, so I, he's doing what he needs to do. Basically. I, <laughs> I feel like we've seen this before. I don't have his other years of spring training stats in front of me, but I, I here's hoping. Here's yeah, hoping. Here, here's hoping. So I want, I want you to go to fan graphs real quick and yeah. pull up his, his fan graphs page. Yeah. And the most surprising metric that is on there is look at his, look at his speed number on there. Do you, do you see his, his base running? Uh, for last year? No, for, for spring training this year. Oh, I don't... It's got a blank for his speed in spring training for me. I don't oh, see really? offense, defense, or base running on spring training and fan oh, graphs. Okay. Well, you know what? I will... Uh, I'll, I'll let that point lie. <laughs> because now maybe I'm imagining things are going crazy. I I don't know. Maybe maybe it shows up for you and not for me. You know what? I'm I'm just so special. Even, even fan graphs knows it. Okay. I they mean, don't... I believe it. They they have my IP address. They have my address. They they just have everything about me. And they said, "Oh, Jacob's logging on. Better better I mean, get those could, numbers up." They could just do you sign in with your account? No, I don't. Oh, you don't pay for your fan graphs? I know, Jacob. Yeah, I know. I'll forgive you this time. Well, thank you. I will always suggest people pay for it if if you can. Um, but you know how things are, things, things get a little tight. And, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 absolutely. I, yeah, I, I'm sorry. I don't mean to, to no. be all judgy, but, no. uh, I, I love fan graphs and I don't want, I want them to stick around and for them to stick around, they got to have money. So that is true. I, I got to convince somebody to pay them. I mean, I, I pay them, but I can't pay everybody's salaries all by myself. I, you, you can, you better be working some other jobs there. Yeah. <laughs> Other than what you just have going on. All right, listen, we are we are getting way off track. <laughs> Wee! Yeah. Woo. Rails gone. Game day internship with the Omaha Storm Chasers is the perfect opportunity for a college student interested in exploring a career in the sports industry. Storm Chasers interns have the chance to work in almost every aspect of game day and event operations at Warner Park while gaining knowledge about the inner workings of minor league baseball. There's no better way to learn and grow while discovering your passions and goals than becoming a part of our Chasers family. To learn more about internship opportunities with the Storm Chasers, head to omahastormchasers.com or email Ania Tate, A-N-I-Y-A-T, at omahastormchasers.com. Everyone get on your face, turn up the storm, we're family. Baseball season is on its way, and there's no better place to spend the summer than with the Quad Cities River Bandits. From the Royals' top prospects on the field to a jam-packed promotional schedule, the fun never stops at Modern Woodman Park. Can't miss any of the action? Ticket packages are on sale now. With full season plans starting at less than $5 per game, Season ticket holders enjoy premium perks, including guaranteed giveaways, team store discounts, a full season parking pass, and so much more. For more information, visit riverbandits.com or call 563-324-3000. But I I think we'll have some other things to talk about after we go through the Spotify Q and A's. All right. And we'll, and we'll get to our reviews later on in the show. So, on our Q and A responses, first off, again, those are exclusively on Spotify. You can only see the question and respond to it on Spotify. Thank you to everyone who responds. We love hearing from you, 
and your opinions. And last episode, we uh, we did have a simple question regarding how the rotation was was going to shake out, and if if people wanted Jordan Lyles in the picture or not. And like I said, we got a we got a ton of responses. Um, first off, Corey Michael said, "Test him," meaning Lyles. Have Marsh ready. Um, I oh, agree okay. more with that. Somebody yeah. was ahead of the curve on that one. I know, right? There's oh, that's not the first time Marsh pops up in these responses, Jeremy. So you are you are a man of the people right now. <laughs> but I know your uh, I know your favorite starting pitcher on the shelf right now, Fistifer, um, said your guy Chris Bubich should be the just, be the just, number. Five. I don't care how how's his arm can, is will he hurt himself more? All right, let's just throw him out there. It'll be fine. <laughs> Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Um, Aaron Bailey said Marsh would be fun, but highly unlikely. Royal Rupert said there are 8.5 million reasons Jordan is the fifth starter for the Royals. And yeah, yeah. that's uh, that's kind of what it's looking like. Rupert. Someday, some MLB team will learn about the sunk cost fallacy, and that will become the new market inefficiency. <laughs> I, uh, I I can't wait to to hear that dissertation, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, Zach Horine, I think is is how you say this name. I like Lyles at five, but he struggles initially. I'd have Alec Marsh and then Lynch to take over the five spot. As long as Lyles eats innings and keep keeps an ERA of around four, that should keep him there in the fifth spot. Uh, if Lyles keeps an ERA around four, I will be celebrating the Royals will be nearing the top of the division. Yep. Things will be good. I don't, I, four is very, very optimistic for his it ERA. Is. It is, especially after last year. Yeah. If, if you can get down to that number, shoot, there's a, uh, we have a lot of celebrating to do pop the champagne. Luke 57, 47 says, is Lyles a good five is Omar an all-star. Hell no. I want anyone else at the five. Let Lyles be that long relief and hide him away. Hashtag vote Infante. Oh my gosh. I'd, I'd always forget about that movement and see. Never forget. <laughs> How could you forget that? I forget. Like, like that was the peak. That was the peak moment of being a Royals fan in my <laughs> lifetime. What I don't forget is the, I remember it was like the first round of voting and they popped up a graphic of what the AL team would look like. And it was like it's every just the Royals, it was just Royals and then Royals Mike, and Mike Trout. Trout. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> that was it. I loved it. Isom Benson says, I want to see an opener with Marsh as the bulk man every five days. I was like, that's, that's a it, good way to go. That actually worked surprisingly well last year. That it did. I'm not opposed to doing that again. Yeah, I think uh, I think we're going to see a lot of and that's something that we're not really thinking about heading into the season. Who is going to fit as a as a bulk man and or who's going to be the opening tandem, um, something like that. Maybe maybe that's something we'll explore before opening day. We have 18 days. All their openers from last year are gone. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Woo. Um, Exodore says, I would love to see Daniel Lynch push Lyles to the bullpen or DFA. Would also love to re-sign Granky for one last go around in three thousand Ks, but I don't think he's capable of starting anymore. Um, yeah, Jeremy, I I see you shaking your your head there, man, and I I couldn't agree more. I somebody, wish go somebody ahead. on on Twitter told me that they needed to cut Jake Brents already, and I was like, well, they could just demote him. They don't need yeah. to cut him. And he said, oh no, we need the forty man spot. I'm like, for who? Granky, I was like, no. I, I don't think we do though. No, like I love Granky, y'all. I do, but I want to, I want to try and win some games this year. Okay, if, I, if, if he Granky, wants to go pitch for another team and get three thousand strikeouts, do it. I hope somebody signs him. I want him to get three thousand strikeouts, but I don't want it to be the Royals. I'm sorry. Please address all your fan mail to Jacob Milham at whoa, gmail. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> easy there. Easy there, Jeremy. <laughs> but I I couldn't agree with you more, though. It's if this was like last season where the rotation just wasn't looking what it was and Granky was available, which I mean, he he was that was the situation last year. It just feels like the Royals have finally taken a step forward and said we are we are ready to win we are ready ready to, to make a step. real effort 
yeah, this is this is a real effort season, and I'm sorry, a, a 40 year old Granky just does not fit that mold in my mind, at least. And then last but not least, Preston Farr said Marsh or Lynch. I lean Lynch if his velo arrives by the end of spring. That's that's a big question mark right it now. Is. Whereas is. Marsh's velo is definitely here. It is. It is and definitely down in Arizona. Now, Jeremy, we got through the Q&A responses. Let's go ahead and talk about your recent piece on Royals Review. You were, uh, you were hyping up MLB The Show quite a bit, which I know... It's it's not as or sorry, I think I underestimate the following of MLB the show, especially do, especially since it stopped being a platform exclusive game. Mm -hmm. Um, So I why don't you go. Why don't you go and talk about that, man, because that comes out this week, right? Uh, Yeah. Early access this week comes out for everybody next week. Um, Early access is for everyone who pre-orders any digital version other than the basic. Gotcha. Uh, so that includes me. I I literally I was like, this is worth going up a tier to <laughs> to get the early access. I am ready for some baseball. Please give me the baseball. Uh, so one of the really cool and smart things that MLB the show does that I am just floored that they're uh, they're the only game that I've seen do this is they roll out releases of their new features um over the course of a couple of months before the game actually comes out so first they have their cover athlete reveal then they'll have uh one feature over here and then a feature over there and so it's been really fun just all uh the end of winter early spring as we're getting there um to just see like oh they're gonna do this and they're gonna add that um bobby witt jr is going to be the only diamond player uh, for the Royals to start this year. I was crossing my fingers. Cole Reagans would be there. But they're going to start him at 80, which is only gold level. You got to be 85 or higher to be diamond. Um, but they do those, those live roster updates throughout the season. So uh, and one actually really profitable way for those of you out there who want to get some stubs in MLB, the show is to buy guys who are in gold, hold on to them and then sell them when they hit diamond Ooh, um, investment. Yes, investments. So I I will be buying so much Cole Reagans uh, once the season starts. Believe me. Anyway, <laughs> so uh, that so that's really cool. But they talked about some of the new features. They're kind of updating the way they're doing Diamond Dynasty. One of the things I really like is that they're going to uh, allow more of your wild card players. So they introduced this season mode kind of thing last year, where some of the cards that you would get earlier in the year would not be allowed to be played later in the year, um, except you can have one wild card on your team. This year, they're going to okay. let you have four. So more of your favorites can stay on your roster all year, which is pretty cool. Um, but the thing that I think is probably the most exciting for me is their updates to the road to the show mode. Now, when I played MLB Showdown back in the day, I picked it up last year for the first time in like a decade. Um, okay. But when I played it back in the day, road to the show was my jam. Because you can play a prospect, start off in double A with like the real double A rosters. um, And then you you earn your way up through the system and you can pick which team drafts you or just let any team. And uh, so it's always cool to just be like, yeah, I'm not just inserting myself into the game. I am inserting myself into the universe and letting the game bring me in. Um, And then last year, they also introduced like this face scan mode, which was really cool. But this year, they're adding narrative elements. Um, So there's going to be like conversations you can have and choices you can make uh, that really kind of flesh out the character of your player. And they're also this is this is a little bit controversial. Uh, They're adding women to the game. And I mentioned that last week yep. uh, during, during my review portion, I, I'm so excited that women are allowed to play baseball now um, because obviously <laughs> they were banned before. Um, and it, it's just cool. Uh, they they're continuing with the Negro league storyline stuff and yep. they're at, doing Tony Morrison this year. Uh, not Tony Morrison. <laughs> I, what is it? Tony? To- I forgot her last name, but oh. she was the f- first a female professional player that anyone knows of okay uh, stone tony stone losing my mind over here tony, uh, morrison, tony morrison um and i was like man if you're gonna have 
if you're going to have her, then you should have female models. That's what they did. They're also introducing uh, another kind of storylines mode for Derek Jeter. And I think some of the other Yankees players from during that dynasty. So okay. that'll be really cool to play, even though I don't care about the Yankees, just the concept of it is cool and to see other teams and other players will be really cool I, again i don't care about that one specifically but as a prototype i'm excited oh. for it um and i'm just i'm excited to to play some baseball video games they're relevant again i've been playing it will be the show 22 going back through its diamond dynasty mode and collecting cards and stuff because i pretty much tapped out 23 gotcha. um so I'm i'm ready for that and I, one thing that occurred to me today, someone who commented on my article talked about that face scan feature and how oh, he had I used it to put his that. own face into MLB the show last year. And his daughter is looking forward, hopefully to do the same thing this year. And based on the way this, the scan feature works, there's no reason she shouldn't be able to, like they shouldn't even have to change anything. But that made me realize that a man uh, or a, a person assigned a male at birth could could scan their face in, put it on a female player, yeah, or vice versa. True. So trans rights, baby. Huh? Didn't even think about that, man. I didn't either. I'm I'm just like, and I, I don't. I doubt it was an intentional choice, but it was like technically, it just made sense to leave it alone. So it's yeah. there. But they're also, I got to tell you, uh, when I was using the stadium creator last year, they had pride mm-hmm. flags in there really it's um, one of the things that you could put around your stadium which okay. i thought was really cool um i didn't actually hear anyone complain about it so i wonder if people just like didn't notice it um but <laughs> they're in not. there and i'm just like this is it's a tiny thing but it's yeah. a thing it, it is a detail that is that is more important to some people than than it is to others like that's and we love seeing those details for the people that it matters most to you do you, you know what i mean absolutely uh it's it just it's a little bit of a signal that's like hey you do matter yep very true very true but if you if you want to go read up um on jeremy's full article it published saturday on royalsreview.com i will have that linked down in the podcast description below also like jeremy said people people comment you have to join the comment community on royals review and just interact with other royals fans um, it is it's a great place to discuss and also jeremy we, we plug this every now and then like that's where we got our start i know i started started writing from the arrowhead pride comments to the fan posts and here i am um and yep, you did the I same did the thing, same thing review, right? world review yeah it is, i just uh, was like i want to see if i can write um and max used to he doesn't do it as much anymore because he's got such a dang large stable of writers at this point. <laughs> yeah. Um, but he used to put out calls ev- at least once a year for if anybody wanted to apply. And like, it's not like you had to be super professional writer person. So I just took a stab at writing some fan posts and he liked them well enough to put them up on the front page. And I was like, Oh, that feels good. Yep. So when he put out his next call, he was like, you want in? And I'm like, yes, please. And I've been doing this since 2016 now Oof, that is crazy that is insane. it is uh, almost eight years i've been doing this i remember like writing, may of 2016 i remember writing my first fan post when i was on um when i was on deployment on a on a ship and the internet was so slow like i couldn't load up any of the normal like i couldn't load up pff it wasn't even it was timing out every time i couldn't load up fan graphs i couldn't load up any of that stuff so i was that's why I was baseball reference and football reference all day, baby. Cause those were the only ones I could get to load. Uh, that makes sense. But Hey, let's go ahead and uh, keep this bus on the road a little bit. And let's cap off today's episode with the Royals review reviews. Um, Jeremy, I will, I'll go ahead and start us off and much to the chagrin of my lovely wife. I am going <laughs> to, review poor things um, which is another one of the oscar noms that she was talking about in the last couple episodes so poor things it's got uh it's got emma stone it's got willem dafoe it's got a good cast oh it's also got mark ruffalo like it's uh definitely wouldn't put those three in a movie but it's like okay this is this is different this is cool and it's a very interesting premise talking about bringing a a woman back to life and 
her trying to like figure out where what her life is or what she should be and shouldn't be in this like early 1900s world i am i'm out on it though it's it's a very interesting concept and i think i would love to read it as a book but it's a good benchmark when like i think we we paused we paused the movie i was like oh well this this is almost over right like this is we're we're almost near the end it feels like we're like about to get to the conclusion of this no we still had an hour and nine minutes left in this two-hour movie i was like this has been a slog this has been a a tough one to watch um so i'll i'll be up front i i haven't finished it, it but it just wasn't for me some of the more there are a lot of artistic elements in it and sometimes that it can be a turnoff to people when it's done excessively and i think that's i think that's what got me personally so if you want to decide for yourself i know it's streaming on hulu uh so you can go check it out there but again it's called poor things and it's up for it's up for best picture i i believe but just wasn't for me i gotta i gotta point out that uh emma stone mark ruffalo and uh willem dafoe not all in the same movie but all in the mcu that's true so i they could be in the same movie is the is it a Mar- is poor things a Marvel movie then, Jeremy? Uh, maybe. Uh, I should have stayed uh, around for the post credit scene, <laughs> and then Venom eats them all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. So I'm going to review a series that I just finally finished last night. At least Ooh. the first season. It ha- does have a second season confirmed, which I'm very excited about. Uh, and that would be Poker Face, uh, streaming on Peacock. Directed and written by Ryan Johnson of Knives Out, Knives Out fame, oh, starring okay. and produced by Natasha Leone of Orange is the New Black fame. Um, it is, it's a mystery show, but okay. less, it's not a whodunit as much as a how to prove it. Um, every mm. episode starts by showing you who done did the murder. <laughs> okay. And then you go back in time. And this is the part that caught me a little off guard at first. Um, so it starts with the murder and then, it'll, or uh, maybe a couple events leading up to the murder, but then the murder, and then it'll flash back to where was Natasha Leone's Charlie during all of this? Oh. Why is she going to be involved in solving this? Because she is not a professional detective. Charlie mm-hmm. is someone who has uh, apparently a mystical ability to tell if you're lying um it's not like lie to me or the mentalist or psych she doesn't give any kind of bullshit science about it excuse my language um (laughs) she just is like yeah no i i could just tell when people are lying and she used to play poker and could tell when people were bluffing made a lot of money that way um so that's why it's called poker face gotcha that that makes sense um, and so in the first episode, she gets in trouble with a casino owner, not for playing poker, but for, um, well, I'll let you watch it, but she gets in trouble with him and finds herself on the run. And so it's very episodic in this world of serialized storytelling. There is a serial element to it, but mm-hmm. it's mostly episodic, okay. um, where, where she is pretty much the only consistent character in every episode. And there's just a who's who list of, of guest stars, uh, starting with Adrian Brody is oh, in the wow. first episode. Ron Perlman is in the last episode. Um, just a whole bunch of people you've heard of before, uh, character actors and big names. Um, and, and they are all just acting the hell out of their roles. Yeah. It is, yeah. it is really tremendous. It's a lot of fun. Um, it, some people will be maybe turned off by the fact that like, how could she tell people are lying, but she doesn't ever try to explain it. And, and I think it's better for that to just be like, this is a thing, just accept it. We're moving on. Um, and that's what most of the characters do. Like every once in a while, someone will test her and she'll get everything right. And then they'll be like, whoa, that's weird. Yeah. Um, and so it's always in- really fun to see, like, how is she going to figure out who did it? We all know who did it. 
and we've got to figure out what what's her plan and then what's she going to do about it um it does it has a couple of missteps i didn't care for the season finale that much there was also one episode in the middle that like the characters and the situations were the most fun in the entire series but like the decisions made by the characters including charlie just didn't make a lot of sense Huh. Uh, I I, oh, I want to talk about it, but I don't want to spoil it, so I'm not going to say anything else. Yeah. Um, just it's Poker Face. Like I said, it's on Peacock. One season out, ten episodes. They've already announced a second season. Ryan Johnson knows how to craft an excellent kind of mystery thing. Knives Out and Glass Onion are two of my Great. favorite mystery movies of all time. Yeah. Um, so if you like either of those, this is not the same thing, but it is like, it's crafted with the same level of care. Um, okay. and, and watch it, do it now. Watch it. Make, make your own decision. Let, let us know. You can hit either one of us up on social media. If you, if you watch those things we reviewed and just want to chat about it or see, uh, see what's up with it. We would love to talk about it, but Jeremy, before we get on out of here, anything uh, anything to add? Anything I forgot? Nope. I I almost forgot MLB The Show if you hadn't sent me a message in <laughs> Slack. I mean, it wouldn't have been the end of the world. I, I I think I'm very I like I said I'm just very excited for that game, and I just want to talk about how excited I am until I can play it. Hopefully later this week. Hell yeah, hopefully so. And I'll probably uh I'll probably be looking to pick up a copy once it hits that first uh, pay drop. <laughs> That's the that's what I always wait for. That Smart. First $10 drop. But that is going to do it for us t- on today's episode. Please drop a five-star review or subscription wherever you are listening. It really does help out the podcast and get us in more feeds and more searches on whatever podcast platform you're listening to. Make sure to check out Royals Review for the news, analysis, and commentary you need on all things Kansas City Royals. want to stress it again if you want to interact with more Royals fans. The the comment section is is a great place to do it, great place to argue, make your opinions known, anything you want to do. For myself and Jeremy, thank you listeners for supporting us. If you ever have a question or something you want us to cover, hit us up on X. Our social media links are in the podcast description below. But... Until next time, go Roy!